Hi guys, I thought I'd talk a little bit about a board that I just designed and show some of the Kai CAD features that I used while I was designing it. It's a pretty simple board. It's uh, two inches tall by one inch wide. It's a two layer board with six mil trace and space uh, and no parts are on the back. All the parts will be mounted on the front and all this is done to keep the board as cheap as possible. The main uh, part of the board, the focus of everything, is this uh, Cypress PSOC 5LP programmable system on a chip. Uh, it's in a 68 pin QFN package and everything else is on the board is built to support this chip. We have the normal uh, contingent of bypass capacitors that go around it and a couple of push button switches here a PMOD connector and a connector for an ESP8266 Wi-Fi board and they share some pins with each other. Uh, got a programming header over here for injecting the programming signals for programming the, the PSOC. Crystal oscillator over here for a 12 megahertz uh, clock uh, which is amped up inside of the PSOC using the PLLs four LEDs and current limiting resistor network over here big honking 3.3 uh, volt linear regulator because this board may be supplying power to some boards that, that are attached to this one uh, USB connector and uh, another reset switch and then a 40 pin IO header around the periphery of the board Five of those pins I use for power ground, reset, uh, things like that. And the other 35 are a general purpose I.O. And what we want to do is try to connect the I.O. pins from the QFN over to these pins on the periphery, this prototyping header, uh, as efficiently as possible uh, without um, um, slicing up the uh, the board with too many vias and crossing in and over between the top and bottom planes. Now I'll turn on the rat's nest. There are some pins on the PSOC that are dedicated. Obviously the powers and grounds are, are dedicated pins that have to be in a certain place. The programming pins are, are over on this side and that's why the programming header is over here. And then there are a couple of pins for the crystal uh, connections up here and the USB D plus and D minus uh, IO pins had to be connected to the USB port so they go through here like that but other than that all the other pins on the PSOC are programmable and all the peripherals the analog and digital peripherals in the PSOC can be dynamically assigned to any pin that you want on the uh, 68 pin QFN uh, so there's not a lot of dedicated functions on the Q, on the PSOC pins that you had to put in specific places so it's really just a matter of trying to get these pins from the QFN over to these prototyping header pins and then once the user programs this board they can decide what peripherals attached to which pins on a prototyping header So the question is how to fan out these QFN pins to the prototyping header. So let's go over to the schematic and take a look at how KiCad can help us do that. And if we go to the top level of the schematic, there are three sections. Uh, there is the PSOC I.O. pins that are described in this sheet. There's the board I.O. pins that are described in this sheet, and then there's the power section over here, which uh, it's pretty simple, it just shows the, the uh, uh, linear regulator. But let's go over to the PSOC I.O. sheet right here. And there's four banks of I.O. on the PSOC that each have their own separate power inputs. They can be driven with different power levels, uh, voltage levels to uh, uh, change the I.O. characteristics, but I've uh, driven each one with the 3.3 volt power supply. And then there are the uh, crystal oscillator pins on this particular section. But other than that, all these pins are, um, are user-definable as to what they do. 
and I've attached a global label to each pin and no wiring just uh, put the global lab label right on the pin there's no need to attach a little stub wire or anything like that you can just jam the, the label right on there and it'll be a connection and what I want to do is I want to grab these pin labels and use them to uh, define the connections that are going to be over on the on the board IO let's take a look at what the board IO looks like and it's got six sections here I've used one sheet and just manually divided into six sections it's got the USB port over here uh, and it's got the uh, PSOC probing, programming header over here uh, the four LEDs the two switches and the reset switch the PMOD header and the uh, four pin extension for doing the ESP8266 uh, interface and then over here is the 40 pin uh, pro prototyping header and it's already got the 5 volt the reset pin the ground pin and the 3.3 volt pin assigned to it uh, and you can see also that the programming header has the various um, programming pins for the PSOC assigned to that as well these are all the global labels that we saw on the previous sheet and now the question is how to assign the other global labels from the PSOC to these pins to do a nice even fan out on the prototyping header so let's go back to the PSOC IO and what we're going to do is just copy these pins over to the other sheet so I can highlight that and then say copy hit the C button well maybe not the C button copy block right there now these pins go from 10 over to 21 so I want to get the next section of pins and that turns out to be this section of pins which starts from 29 and goes up to 41 so I'm going to grab those and copy that block and after 41 we go over here this is pin 46 through 55 so we can grab those and I got one extra copy block let me get rid of that guy hit the delete button on that and then the last section of pins are these over here okay now I'm going to take all these over to the other sheet where the prototyping header is and what I'm going to do is save that block and that's going to put the block onto the paste buffer where I can use it later and now I'm just going to get rid of all these. Now I'm going to go over to the other sheet with the prototyping header on it. And I'm going to paste that block of pins in. And there it is. Now it's a question of just picking these things up and assigning them to pins over here. But let's try to do that intelligently at the start let's go back over to the layout and I want to get pins fanned out evenly from the QFN over to this prototyping header and if I look up here I probably want to take a pin from up here and get it assigned up here to this pin and then work my way um, counterclockwise around the chip and counterclockwise around the board making these assignments so if I look here, this pin is pin P3 underscore zero. So I just have to look for that pin in my list over on the schematic and then start assigning some of the global I.O. labels. So I'll go back to the schematic and look for pin 3 underscore zero. And that's this pin, this label right here. So I'm going to take that one and I'm going to assign it to this connection over here. So say move and then just drop it on there now go to the next pin say move and then drop it on there 
next pin move drop it on move drop it on in fact if I want to I can take a little section like that and drop it on now let's see if we're getting the kind of fan out that we want on the layout so I'm going to ex uh, export the net generate the net list for this export it into there then I'm going to go over to the PCB and I'm going to import the net read the current net list and see what the connections look like and you can see all of the uh, IO that I've assigned is kind of fanning out very evenly let me try to get that on okay there we go it's fanning out very evenly to the IO header the prototyping header so so far that seems to be working out okay so I'll shift back to my schematic and take some more pins and drop them on there Move that pin and export my net again and with KiCad you have to export the net and then re-import it back into the uh, layout program you don't have a live connection like you do with Eagle which is one thing I miss about Eagle but you can't have everything so I'll export it again go back and look at the layout re-import and again looks like things are lining up pretty nicely now I've got to make the connections through to the there are a total of eight IO pins that are used down here there are eight that go on the PMOD connector and then I share uh, those eight connections with the ESP8266 connector so I'm going to go ahead and assign those pins and I don't really have a good idea which ones will go where but I'll just put them in there and see what happens I'll take this one assign it here take this one rotate it around assign it here this one export the net import the net and if you look down here we can see that we're getting the the pins uh, assigned to the correct locations they may not be in exactly the correct order looks like they may be need to be flip-flopped on some of these pins uh, but possibly not depending upon how you route them in there but let's go ahead and and flip the two pins these two pins and these two pins so go back to this connect to this schematic and we're going to take this one and move the global label over to this side and move this one over to that side I really didn't mean that let me back up on that one move it rotate it export again go back over here reread the nets and that looks a little bit better for those two in the middle for those two in the middle 
And now we go back and we'll finish up with the assignment of pins. Move. And the global labels in KiCad really make this easy to sign, assign signals and, and move them around. I don't use a lot of uh, uh, wires in my schematics. Mainly I just use the labels because I'm doing a lot of microcontroller and FPGA designs which are really just like big bags of logic with a bunch of I.O. pins attached to them and there's not a real defined signal uh, flow with a lot of these microcontroller and FPJ designs so there's not a lot of reason to do a lot of manual point-to-point -point wiring because it doesn't really show you much about what the circuit is doing anyway. In the linear sections where you have power supplies and, and amplifiers and things like that it makes more sense. Now I'm going to pick a uh, start from the top here and I don't want to use the uh, reset pin for anything so I'm going to delete that. That's a dedicated pin it can also be used as I.O. but I have, used, have dedicated it for the reset function so I'll delete that one. And then I'll go ahead and put these in here. and I have one pin left over for something. I don't know what, but possibly a button or something. So I'll go, I'll go down here and take it and I'll just put it on a button and let's see how that all turns out. Go back to my layout. and take a look at what I have here and I've got a pretty nice signal fan out all the way through here sorry um, except for this signal right here that I attached to my button which is coming down from the top crossing over the chip and going to the button which is really not a good way to do it uh, that's going to lead to wiring on the bottom of the board or in extra vias and everything else and there's really no reason to have that so I want to move this pin down here and then shuffle all those pins over and that's easy enough to do what I'm going to do is take this pin off of there and I'm going to take this pin right here and put it on there and then I'm going to take all these pins shuffle them down one Take this pin and move it on there. Generate my net list and go over there and see if I've achieved what I want. Let's see. So now, yeah, it looks like the connection is going from here down to the button and everything else through here is okay as much as possible with uh, you know the programming the, the reset pin that's the reset here is a dedicated pin so there's no way I can move that so it's gonna cut down across these other pins and there's not much I can do about that other than then handle it in the routing and you know nothing's perfect you're, you're gonna have some vias going through anyway but other than that it looks like a pretty good 
fan out from the QFN of the PSOC to the prototyping header, so I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, I've defined the uh, net connections, uh, how the uh, pins on the QFN are attached to the prototyping header, and after that it's time to go and do some routing, and as you can see I've already done a considerable, considerable amount of routing on this board, and what I'm going to do is show you how I use KiCad's new push and shove router to route these connections here. Now previously when I worked with Eagle it was always a matter of, especially in tight little regions like in here, it's always a matter of, of just fiddling and fiddling with vias and, and traces trying to get design rules to, to not be violated and it was always, a, a, I mean to route this many signals here you know, might take an hour. Uh, but with the push and shove router and KiCad it's actually pretty easy. So what I'm going to do is uh, make sure I'm set up for this. I have, I'm using 6 mil traces, 27 mil vias. I set my routing grid to be as fine as possible because if I'm going through these uh, tight little areas in here it uh, helps the uh, push and shove to to find a viable solution. And now I'm going to start the push and shove router and to do that I had to put myself into the OpenGL mode for viewing and my screen will change a little bit when you do that and just go in here and start the router and right click in here to set up my routing options I'm going to set myself up in the shove mode there's also a walk around mode which I won't use here and a mode that just highlights collisions but doesn't really do any type of auto routing for you but I'm going to work in the push and shove mode and I've got these options set up here it'll shove vias around you can turn that off and it doesn't really seem to do anything uh, to help at all you're still going to shove vias I don't know if I'm using it incorrectly or if that option just doesn't work very well and I'm not going to jump over op obstacles and I'm going to uh, remove redundant tracks if any are found, automatic neck down, smooth the drag segments, so on and so forth. Uh, those, those, those are all relatively default settings. And optimization effort while it's push and shove is set to medium. Now all I have to do is go here and I can drag and I'll put a via in here in order to Oh wait, I don't have to put a V on that one, so I'll just leave that one alone. And here's a ground. The ground is the one that needs the V. So I start routing the ground. I put V. And you can see how it kind of moves that, moves that away. But uh, i put a V right there. And end that net then this is sorry now I'll route the oscillator pins this one see how it moves that other one out of the way and it allows me to go up between these pads of the oscillator of the, of the crystal without violating design rules and now this one and just and I'm going to jump over that barrier put a, v, a via in there put a V on that side Then go route this one. Notice how it pushes that other one out. And I'm just going to roughly put it in there. Put another VA in here. Put another VA here. Connect. Then this one. 
I'm not obviously obviously I'm not being very careful what I'm doing here I don't have to be because I can shove these things out of the way as I as I work I don't have to do a lot of planning beforehand about how how to leave space for things because the push and shovel just put that in there take care of all the details for me and allow me to just concentrate on the global aspects of routing and then I can go back later on clean all this up so those are all routed now I can go over here and route this and you can see how hard it would be to snake a lead from here over to here with that big V in the way so let's see what happens and I have a little stub left here from something so I'm going to delete that Okay, so now we'll route that. And see how it pushes pushes everything away and makes it very easy to to get this thing routed in there. Now I can route the USB lines. Now I got to get over that line, so I'll put a via in there. Go across, put another via. And now I've got four lines left. These are for the LEDs. Put that one in. And so I got those in there. Now I got to make connections that go across from to these uh, pins over here. And what I can do is just fa fan these out a little bit and then make the connections. So I go down here, and instead of routing, I'll say drag. I'll hit the G, and I will make some space. Let's see what we can do. Now I'm going to route off of this pin. I'll put a via because I have to jump over. Now I'll put another via. Connect. Now it'll come from this pin. I put a via. Put another via. Come from this pin. via and I'm going to drag these down a little bit or I'll try to slide another via in here or I could put one up here either way but let's try to drag these down drag it drag the via
and then I'll put my connection in. I've made my connections and I've still got one more connection over here that I have to handle which in this case is going from one side of the chip to the other so I have to have to do that on the bottom layer there's just no avoiding it I'm gonna go over here put it via and then come across here put another via and then make my connection. Now you can see how simple that, that was. It, just a very, very few, uh, very little fiddling on my part with, with moving things exactly to try to keep the design rules from being violated. It all, all just happens automatically in the background and I have to provide just the coarse motor skills to get the routing to go from one pin to the next pin and give it a little guidance along the way as the, the route I want to take, but all the fine motor skills are handled by the, the auto router, by the push and shove router, and uh, I'm just providing the overall guidance, and it's very quick to work this way, and uh, you can get almost auto router-like speeds, but get a manual routing-like look to, to uh, what you're doing. And it's obviously uh, since I was so rough at the beginning there with with what I was doing then it's not optimized but if you want to optimize your routing and make it look pretty you can always go through and and just click on a segment and, and say G and drag it and then you can drag the uh, you can drag the pins around settle them you know make them all line up real nice and pretty and uh, I mean you can fiddle with it for hours it's just it, which is you know something that I tend to do which is not a good idea but it's just the way uh, certain personalities are but it makes it very very easy to produce a very nice looking layout if that's what you're interested in so you can straighten up everything and, and move things in for very tight tolerances in some places and uh, and just optimize your layout and if you decide to need some room somewhere to put something else in you can just go ahead and and drag and drag a lead like this and push it down as far as you can and put yourself some room in there to do something else and or go over here click on that one and if you want space over there you can go ahead and make yourself some space for another component it's uh, really it makes it easier to explore your design space when you have all those those little niggling details handled by uh, the software versus having to do everything manually by hand and pre-calculate everything in your head about oh do I have enough room for this oh is there enough clearance over here to get through there so so you tend to be much more freer with your design because you can make these these kinds of decisions very they do this kind of exploration very easily so anyway, that's how the push and shove router uh, has worked on this design and, and it turned out very effective for me. I really didn't know if the push and shove router was worth all that much before I started using it and now I just wouldn't go, go back from it. So here you have it. This is the final routing for the PSOC board after I've kind of cleaned up all the all the routing and uh, uh, especially around here and spaced some of the wires out uh, to uh, prevent uh, these vias here from cutting up the ground plane on the back and and things like that and just gussied it up a little bit uh, you know which is what I spend a little bit too much time doing but when you've got an OCD personality that's that's sometimes what you have to do Anyway, I hope this video has been helpful. It's showing two of the things I like most about KiCad. Uh, the use of uh, global labels to assign pins and move pins around in my design, which is useful since I do a lot of FPGA and uh, types of designs, and also with these PSOC designs where, where the pins can be pretty much arbitrary function and it's just a matter of finding a good routing. 
And I also demonstrated the push and shove router, which for me is a real game changer. It really reduces the amount of effort and reduces the amount of time it takes me to do a layout, a good layout. And uh, so I'm very happy with so far with what I'm seeing happening in KiCad in terms of its development. Anyway, that's all for now. Thank you for watching.